It is time to do some house cleaning, and I'm sure we will have several house cleaning videos. And by what what I mean by house cleaning is maybe some refactorings or just good code practices. I notice I've been ignoring, and it's time to apply them. But having applied them, we need to apply them retroactively and that kind of thing. So anyway, it's time to do a little bit of house cleaning. We're going to do two things. I'm going to type do a type def to help us uh, clean up some code. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the next video, I notice I think we need this. I need to start using namespaces more judiciously uh, inside my code files, especially in the engine project. Uh, simply, I, I use them a little bit in some areas, not in others, and I think I should be consistent. Choose, choose a way and go with it. And ideally, yes, we do have namespaces to avoid naming collisions. Anyway, let me open up the uh, profiler file here, and if I do a Control F for unsigned. You'll see that I used unsigned in a few places here in the CPP file. And then in the header file, I used unsigned here and here and here and kind of in the same places I used in the CPP file, obviously. But anyway, it's just kind of verbose to say unsigned int. Right? And what is an int? An int on my computer is 32 bits. And when I say unsigned, it will be positive. Um, but really, that keyword unsigned takes up a lot of room just for uh, one bit. <laughs> in fact, if, if you go watch my two's compliments videos, you'll see how, how negative numbers are represented in in binary. But anyway, the unsigned pretty much says determines how we interpret the very last bit. Uh, now what I'm going to do won't necessarily make compile times any faster, nor will it change the semantics, but I think it will make readability a little bit easier for us and also maintainability. And what I mean by un, uh, by maintainability is what if I want to change this to a long, long, right? That is an actual valid C++ type. In fact, it's kind of interesting because a unsigned int, it's the same as saying long on the platform I'm on. Whether it's an int or long, it's the same thing. But a long, long is double the size of an int or long. Does that make sense? So if I say long, I get 32 bits. If I say long, long, I get 64 bits, right? eight bytes. Anyway, so if I want to change this unsigned int to an unsigned long, long, well, now I need to run around and everywhere I say int, I need to say long, long. And what if I'm compiling for multiple platforms and different configurations? On some of them, I want to say long, long, and other ones I want to say int. and Ah, oh, what a headache, right? And we can use conditional compilation a little bit to help us out the preprocessor for sure. But um, a better technique is to rely on the compiler as much as the compiler will support you. And the compiler will support us in this instance. So what I'm going to do, uh, you'll notice I may added a miscellaneous folder. And I'm going to add a new item, header file. I'm going to call it type defs. All right short for type definitions. And in here, pound, if and def, uh, engine, type defs, h, control L, control VV, uh, pound define, control end, enter, pound, end if. It's really simple, and here I want to say type def, unsigned int, to a uint. All right, now this doesn't necessarily change what an unsigned int is. It just says, hey, whenever you see uint, just think of it as an unsigned int. It is the exact same thing. All right, pretty, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to save all this, go to Profiler. Then up here at the top, I'm going to pound include my type defs file. Now, well, uh, uh, well, the reason why I'm grumbling here is the profiler.h file. This file is shared between all three projects here, the engine, the engine tester, and the sandbox game. And the search pattern for the type desk file is I have to go up one, and then up to another one, and then down into miscellaneous. So to actually get it correctly, I have to say go up one, Go up another one, go to miscellaneous, right there, and in there you'll find type defs.h, which is fine, but that's only true. This condition's only true inside the engine project. All right, if I go over to engine tester, I may get lucky, I may not, but uh, 
this path certainly does not exist in the engine tester project. I can't go up and up. And remember, profile test is the file we actually used or included this header file, so I can't go up and up like that. I can't. I can't. I can't. Right, and same thing in here when we finally start using the profiler in our game. I can't go up as well. So, ooh, I'd rather just say, hey, pound include miscellaneous type defs. But then we get the red squiggly, and the Intellison's like, I don't know where that is. I can't find it. Because if you look at profiling, there is no subfolder miscellaneous, and definitely uh, not a type defs.h file inside that. It's, it's out here. I had to go up, up, and down. I just can't go in. So, this is the difference between angle brackets and double quotes. I'm going to drop angle brackets out here, which means search the additional include directories for my project. Now we still get the red squiggly, but uh, we, we can fix that. I, we need every project to search the root of itself. In order to use this syntax here, we need every project to search starting at the root and going up. I don't want to worry about this fishy business where I have to go up, up, and then down. I just say, hey, start at the top and work your way down. All right, that's what I'm kind of assuming here is going to miscellaneous into the type defs.h file. Well, the way we're going to have to do that is add the project's path itself to the additional include directories for engine. So let's do that. Right click, properties, uh, general, additional include directories and I'm just going to use the the project macro and say project dir like so enter enter red squiggly gone let's see if this uh see if this builds control shift b wait for it and it succeeded very cool so now I want to actually use that type def everywhere I say unsigned int I want to replace it with uint control h unsigned int I want to replace it with uint just for tickles, I'm going to say match case. I don't know if match whole word will work with a space in it. Let's find out. Replace all. Oh, looks like it did. Okay, close that. Control Shift B. Build. Wait for it. Build succeeded. Very cool. Uh, let's go to the compilation unit. Do the same thing. Right here, and all these unsigned ints, I want to replace them. So I'm going to put my cursor in some white space. Hit Control Shift H. And the reason why I put it in white space is if it's on some uh, identifier like get delimiter or profiler, it will automatically populate this box, which I don't want it to do. I want it to save what I did in the last file. That's why I clicked in some white space. Click replace. Oh, I hit control shift H. I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Control shift H is replacing all files. Sorry. Let me close that. White space again. Control H. Replace all. Maybe I do want to replace all files, but I want to do this judiciously. All right, seven occurrences replaced. Good. Close that. Control Shift B. Be sure that we still build. Very good. And of course, I have my unit tests in the background to verify that I didn't screw anything up. And it's vital that I run my unit tests immediately after making that change because if my unit tests failed, then I am immediately in context to go figure out, well, I just changed that to a uint. How would that screw that up? Whereas if I didn't have the unit test and a month later I got a bug, then I'd be like, oh, what's because I, and I got to, it'll take me an hour or two to catch up to where I was. So there's a trade off. If I have my unit test, great. But the unit test took a lot of time. You saw me work through several videos to get to that point. Uh, in some cases, we can actually make it do this. We could have the unit test run on every build. So when I hit Control Shift B, the unit test would just automatically be part of the build process. We could, definitely do that and probably should. Um, I've heard unit tests as being a way to extend the compiler and obviously we're kind of extending the compiler here. We have the unit tests which uh, the compiler does all of its static checks and helps us out but then later we have our unit tests to help back us up so anyway some food for thought for sure. So there you go there's a simple little type defs file. I made it a file because well, chances are we're, we are going to do several type defs as we go along, but I figured let's make the file now. And uh, in the next video, we're going to worry about the uh, namespace issues.